Welcome to episode 12 of the Kitchen Talk podcast. I'm your host, Dave Kenny, and alongside me, I have Glenda Harrington. Glenda Harrington, how are you, Glenda? What's the story? How's nice. things? Good. Good, Good yeah. So, Glenda's going to talk to us about her, uh, her story of addiction. <laughs> and Glenda also runs, what's the name again? Friends, help a friend. Help a friend, super. Friend, help a friend. Oh, friends, help a friend, super. One. Yeah. So, Glenda, help. What? Not I didn't write the name, but now, yeah, <laughs> just I just wrote a few bullet points down. So, yeah. How did you start with the soup one? So in 2018, I was very loosely doing the soup one with an ex-partner. We went into a polo, do you remember polo? Yeah, yeah. An occupation in town um, for seven weeks. So we went in there and when that finished, when we walked out, I just thought, nah, something needs to be done. We need to continue mm. something. So when the cameras and the media went away, most other people went away and I set up a soup one called Friends Handle Friends with the same volunteers that we had the first time. So we just changed the name, okay. changed the location and just kept going. So when I went out first, we had, I didn't realise what I was getting into, we had one pot of soup, okay. and tea and coffee and, yeah. you know, it was kind of half in, half out and then it just blew up, blew up. Feeding 600 people a week now. Jesus. 600 easy, people? Easily, yeah. Well, I'm out two nights a week. So it would be 300 people. Right. On a good night, it's absolutely mental. But then so you said you're two nights a week. About two nights a week. Yeah, feeding six hundred people. Easily. That's crazy. Absolutely. Well, they want me gone. You know, yeah. the regulators they want me arse chasing me, right. and they're not happy that I'm there because they're making a show, and I'm making a show with the government funded bodies that should be doing the jobs that yeah. I'm doing, that my volunteers are doing. Mm. So it went from just going out at night from half seven to half ten feeding them. That was okay. And then I found I was ad- advocating more for people trying to get into treatment, trying to get their social welfare. A lot of homeless people can't read, they can't write, they That's can't speak right, yeah. for themselves. Yeah. So I, I would go around with my big gob mm. and I would, would help them yeah. with, with things like that. I mean, we've had lads coming down, had me paid for six or seven weeks because they were being given forms in social welfare. They can't read or write. Yeah. So they were too embarrassed to say, so they were leaving with the form and coming back to me and saying, still didn't get paid again. So that's how I ended up then kind of going with people and helping them to do just little things that made such a mas- massive, massive, massive difference, difference to them. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, because like, when I walked in the hospitals myself, we did have a lot of people like that were coming in struggling mm. with reading and writing as well. And obviously going and trying to collect the social welfare. And I remember a few of them coming back and I was just pissed off as that. And, like, and they're treated like dirt. They're yeah. treated so badly mm. in, in the likes of social welfare. It's just a number. To them, you know, and, and you do it here on the free farm, they don't care. They really don't. You know well, I'm bad from the free farm. Yeah. Because I know they're, they're so rude and they're so ignorant and yeah. they, they, it just upsets me. The they just they don't get it, don't you? No. Know? Like, they're just on the farm, no. someone's bringing in, someone's no. giving out. No. Yeah. And I mean, for me as well, I, I have a huge problem with So if somebody, especially young men, they get really raw deal in this mm. country. But if a young man becomes homeless in the morning, and they go to Park A Hall, they'd be bunched in with someone that's been homeless for 20 years. Yeah. That someone's flat them out on the crack mm-hmm. and they're put in the same hostel as them. It's only a matter of time before they deteriorate. So they're yeah. on a hamster wheel then yeah. that they can't get off, they can't access treatment because yeah. I mean they can't turn up for a doctor's appointment, never mind an assessment. Yeah, 100%. So it's just a rat race then yeah. that they, it's, it's nearly impossible for them to get off. Would you feed a lot of kids in there? Yeah. How was that? Yeah, and you know, people have so many different opinions. I mean, feeding children. Their mummies and daddies are in, so they're in emergency on accommodation. They don't always have access to kitchens. Yeah. They can't feed your kid out of McDonald's. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? They haven't got the money yeah. to feed your kid out of McDonald's. And they want your kid to get potatoes and, yeah. and, and vegetables and meat. Mm. So they come down to me and they'd be mortified. They'd, some of them are not. Some of them don't care. Yeah. But some of them, are, you know, the majority of them are embarrassed. Yeah. They come down, they're getting their dinners in tubs and they're running. They're going before anyone sees them. I do a school lunch project as well, so I give mummies school lunches for their kids because the kids are embarrassed yeah. going to school without school lunch. Yeah. Or I do a breakfast pack for mummies because sometimes if they're in hotels and stuff, they're miles away <coughs> from their kids' school. Yeah. So they're having their lunch on the bus or their breakfast on the bus. So they have a banana and a breakfast bar and a juice in a bag mm. for the next morning to get the kids to school. It's crazy like where everything mm. going on this being in, in this country. Like I know well, I'm not discriminating anyone, I know a lot of Immigrants are coming in, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's fair. Me personally, I don't think it's no, fair. I agree. Leaving your own, having to be that worry or whatever they send up your soup, mm-hmm. going to feed for fucking meals and stuff. Boy, these, and I'm not like it. I don't know who it was. 
I remember when I was working, and I won't say which job I was, I was working at a job and a couple of immigrants came in to work from an agency, do you know what I mean? And mm. they were going back to a hotel in Bally and they were nice fellas, they were mm. nice fellas, but the fucking luxury they had, they were getting tokens for fucking, yeah. like a four course meal, yeah. they were getting a, a week's wage, everything I just think the problem was so bad, mm. and then you're piling all these problems on top of the problems, so yeah. the people were at the bottom of the pile, and now at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the pile, they're never getting out of it. No. So they're just piling in and piling in and I'm not solving the problem. Yeah. Just squashing it all down. Yeah. That's that's for me. I there's no answer. No. There's no fix in it. There's not. Definitely not. Yeah. I'll say they were a lot of people mental health and stuff in there, yeah. Huge, huge mental yeah. health. At the moment, if you ask me what one of the biggest problems on the super is, and people are quite shocked by this, the prostitution with very young men and very young women. Jesus. Huge problem at the moment. I actually had to go outside for help because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these exactly. girls. The 14, 15, 16 year old girls oh. and boys fighting. I don't know, laughed. I'm not doing it. I'm like, girls, Jesus Christ. it would shock the shit out of you. It is unbelievably bad right now. And there's That's no help for them. And yeah. in the, a lot of them would be in the care system and the care system doesn't give shite and they're just out there and they can just do whatever they want, mm. whatever they like. And there's nobody looking after them or wondering where they are. They go missing on a regular basis. So that's the deal they're out there. Not necessarily supporting her, but just supporting their lives yeah. by doing that. I've got to be seeing on, on, I see that on your own, man. This is Dublin. You had on this tick, TikTok the other day. There was someone hanging over the bridge at half two in the morning. But I know it's right because I've witnessed any force man himself. So she jumped, you know. Yeah. And God, thank God, he, he, he rescued her now. But like, yeah. the thoughts of say that I've gone through a lot of people's heads in there. That was my first ever suicide that I saw with yeah. a girl jumped. We used to, when I first started, when I was in Apollo, we were on the corner of, um, I'm real bad to name, Streets, O'Connor mm. Bridge. You know that yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. on the corner. Mm. And a girl stood at the super room for a little while chatting and she had a backpack. And she literally gone, she ran and she just bailed over the wall and she just landed in the liffy. But her backpack was full of bricks or rocks or whatever she had in it and she didn't oh, make it. It took me weeks to get over. Oh, weeks yeah. and weeks. Because she's standing talking to me and another girl, and she just went boom from the back of and just bailed over the wall. It's probably just a little cry for help. Damn. Someone, someone say something to me to stop me from doing it. And we didn't. You didn't know. We didn't, didn't know. know. Oh, yeah. it took me weeks to get over. Yeah. I found another body as well up at, up at Dublin City Council during COVID, and I just will never forget the way he was treated. Now he was clearly dead a mm. while, and I walked up into the the bushes and I just seen his feet. But even the way. You know, the ambulance man and everyone treated him. It was just a food. Just, just another just, number, just, just another dead body in the street. Another junkie. And they were his words. And I just, that stayed Jesus. with me. Things like that yeah. stay, stay with me. Little things like that yeah. stay with me. Or if I get phone calls from the matcher, three, four, five in the morning, and the lot there next to kin, they don't have anyone else. Oh, and if I die, just will you let Glenda know? And I'm like, okay. Well, I can't do anything. I'm not yeah. a doctor, you know, but. Stuff like that would stay with me. Yeah. Try to, like, you, you have a nerve, that's all you want to someone to talk to. You want someone to listen. Someone to know. Someone they to know. They wouldn't even talk that. to me. The yeah. doctor would ring me and say, We have such and such in the matter. They're going down for surgery now. You're the next kid. We're just letting you know. They just want someone to know. Okay. If they're getting, having an operation. Yeah. That's stuff crazy. like that. Yeah. yeah stuff like I that. I remember would walking stay in the hospitals and all. And, and I remember a guy came in. A lot of them are chronic alcoholics, you know, and some of them are Polish. I remember a Polish boy came in and he was just battered and bruised in the face for far so many times of being drunk. Yeah. And he came in and uh, there was blood all down his hands. I said, what the fuck was wrong with this fella? And I looked up and he was, I've never seen that right before. He hacked so much at his arms, like, you know what I mean? Mm. They're trying to tell you what to do on the phone. Like, what the fucking deal? I'm not trying for this. Yeah. I came in just to help people, to put them to bed and, and that was it. But not realising what I had to do with a lot of the staff in the yeah. hostels are, are very bad. Only had you came here. Training. And I'd be honest with you because I was there. Yeah. They're just more normal people like them brought in more or less off the streets and being put in. And yet you do get a forced aid or the help, the health, safety or fire or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, not doing When you're dealing with something like that, you're yeah, like, what? But yeah. I, like, I got the privilege to help people in there as well, giving them clothes and stuff like that. And, and, it, and it was a nice feeling, do you know what I mean? You can see the warmth in their faces. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's terrible you know. with socks. Oh, it's <coughs> so much. People don't realise that. One of my volunteers, Helen, she's a little dope. She's an mm. older lady. And she'll get overwhelmed by the crowds. Yeah. And she's like, how are we going to do it? How are we going to help all these people? And I say, if we help one person, if we make one person feel better yeah. about their our job is done. Exactly. And that stays with her. And she just saved me when it's absolutely been a mental night. And I've yeah. tried 75 times 
she was like, but Glenda, you must help one person. Do you struggle with help, like? Donations. Donations and people doing the service with us. No, I have no. the amazing group of volunteers yeah. that I've had from the very start. So many, how many people are there? They're all together is about seven of us. That's brilliant. And we're like a little family and yeah. we all look after each other. And we only have to give one a look yeah. and they'll know. And we have a lad in with us at the moment in recovery jail and he goes out and does security, but I don't even like to use the word security because yeah. I don't think they need... Just to keep things in order because you do, you do see the madness of it sometimes. Where do you do it? Do you do it at the GPO? Is no, it? I'm no. not Bank of Ireland. I, I did the GPO for about about six weeks and yeah. then I had a nervous breakdown. I was like, nah, I can't do this down yeah. It wasn't so you know, mental. Yeah. Mental. <coughs> I'm down at Bank of Ireland at Trinity College and it's, it's going down. Yeah. Huge crowds, huge. And with donations, what are you saying? Do you do some with donations? We do because the charity regulator now is now saying that I have to register as a registered charity or see what I'm doing. So that's a big fat no thanks. What's that? Going to tax you? That's well. I'll, yeah, and I can oh, pay God. myself a wage. Yeah. I can be a registered charity like the McFerry Trust, like Folk okay. Ireland. No thank you. That's really? not why I started doing this. Don't want to pay myself a wage. Yeah. Don't want to be a big boss of anyone or the manager of anything. Because they will tax you, won't you? Yeah. That's mad. Yeah. Go out just helping people and they want I to I can pay myself a wage, so they keep saying that. But you know, I don't want to pay myself a wage. Yeah. I'm paying myself a wage and doing it for the wrong reason. Exactly. No. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm not allowed to take donations, but... Not every little helps. Doesn't stop me. Yeah. It won't, they won't stop So anyone wants to donate. <laughs> I can't, not allowed to take money. Give me money. a shout. No, not cash. money. Food, clothes, anything yeah. that is yeah. hard. Toys yeah. for kids. Yeah. Bus passes, anything that anyone wants to donate. Give me a shout and give Glenda a shout. I'm quite a friend. We'll be friends. Friends, help friends helping friends. Right, I'll <laughs> have to write that down. I will actually. I'm going to write that down. Um, yeah, no, Jesus. Like, I didn't. That's mad how, how, how bad it is, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's mental. They've, they've tried a few times to shut me down. Like, they've tried a couple of times. So the HSC came in. We had five of our lives last year. They came in in their little special white coats yeah. and two little men. And he came up and he said, are you the boss? And I said, I am. And he said, I'm shutting you down. And I said, why? And he said, health and safety. You haven't got um, hand washing station. You haven't got this, you haven't got that, whatever. That was COVID crap, was it? No. They, they, no just this was after yeah. COVID. Right. They wanted us gone. She came us down the road to mm. O'Connell Street making show of government. And I said, that's no problem. I'm going to get back in the van. You tell all those people, all those kids now, they're getting no dinner. And I'll sit in the van, I'll wake you. Mm. And let me know when it's done. And I walked away and he came back to me and he said to me, I, I'm going to leave you for tonight. I said, I can't, you might, pal. Yeah. So the HSC gave me a list of huge things I had to do, compliance. and So I went viral with it. I went to RTE. All the newspapers picked up and at the news. I was on the news. I was like, I'm going nowhere. Mm. They're not shutting me down. It's just not going to happen. I will comply with some of your rules. Some of your rules are bullshit. Exactly. And I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. I physically can't do it. They wanted me to rent a, a HACCP approved kitchen. They wanted me to do HACCP approved courses. Stupid crap. Mm. And I said, these people need sleeping bags. They don't need a food prepared in a HACCP kitchen. So the whole nation got behind us. It was absolutely Brilliant. amazing. Oh, it was amazing. They backed down and we won. Yeah. We won. They, the, the, the HSC got onto me. They said, we've never seen in all my years of working out, anything like the support yeah. that you just got. So people can see that we're needed. Exactly, yeah. They, they don't like us. What and uh, the cute who was on the cooking first yourselves? Yeah. They were me. at home. Yeah. And the kids me. were hungry. <laughs> they don't eat yeah. any cuddle in the sandwich ever. They don't eat that now. The, the smell of it, they're like, oh man, not again. Yeah. Yeah, I do everything at home. Pretty so much. I'd start cooking early on Tuesdays and Saturdays and then I have a van driver that comes and collects me at half seven. We mm. have a system and it works. Yeah. Keep doing it. Do yeah. you think you're going to be able to do it more days or just do it the only set days? Oh, at the moment, I know it's too. for you, yeah. At the moment, definitely too. Well, financially. Yeah. Too, right, I'm okay. not allowed to ask for donations. That's so crazy. financially at the moment, it's just too. Yeah, you can't set up a go for me pay or all that like that. No, the regulator will be run up your ass, no. That's mad. Like, no. You're just you're doing it your own free will just to help other people. Yeah. I used nothing's to have, going I, in your pocket. Like. No, never. I have a butcher's in the Omni. Yeah. That was accepting donations <coughs> for me. So you'd go in there and you'd give in a tap. And I'd go down and I'd buy the meat mm. and I'd cook the food. No cash ever changed. Yeah. And it was, you know, and the regulator rang the butchers and told the butchers what he was doing with the criminal offence. That's fucking disgraceful. He's not allowed to take money anymore in my name. Well, in the name of the charity. Just put money now. <laughs> <laughs> right as well as away. Yeah, but we're still out there yeah. and we're still doing it. No, I'm just more interested now in this than you were talking to me. I really am. <laughs> I seen Michelle, Michelle for up last week, that's just need a little deal, probably some of you sick or something, was it? 
I want to do it. I want to get more involved. I really do. Yeah, I, I know you're looking at yeah, do. I want to. Oh, shit. Yeah. No, I will. I definitely will. No crying. What? People come in and volunteer and cry. And no. I will be hugging them, no, feed right. the people. Oh. See, the thing is with me, I, I love giving back now. Ever since I went to recovery, I love helping others. And I love people in recovery on the table. I think, to be honest, before I was in recovery, it was more helping yeah, others. You know, were, like, yeah, yeah, I didn't realise it when I was obviously walking in the hostels and other people yeah. that are suffering. Four from. of our volunteers are in recovery. Brilliant. Because they give that message of hope yeah. to addicts. And in particular, Jail, he's loud and very, very. I think I know Jail. Everybody knows. I think I know Jail. But Jail's like, what story, bro? Yeah, yeah. He identifies so well with people. Yeah. And I heard him saying the other week, and it blew me away. I, I, I didn't hear the whole conversation, but Jail said, there is hope. There is hope, bro. Mm. And I just thought, that's what they need to hear. Yeah. That's what they need to hear. Mm-hmm. There is hope. It is very difficult for anyone on the street to get street. And this is why I brought this podcast in, just, just for a message of hope. You know that way? There's always hope. Yeah. Always. But I, I, I do think when they get into the system, it's very, very hard yeah. for them to get out. I mean, I see girls and boys coming in, fresh, yeah. young kids, and I, and I see them a year's time, and I'm just like, Jesus Broken. Christ, what happened to you? Broken. They can't get out. Yeah. It's so difficult, and I suppose it's very easy for people to say, just go to treatment, and they'll just get your shit together. No. If only. You need some sort of program in your life, and it's more, it's, it's discipline. Mm. You know, it really is. Everything boils down to this kind of And they all say it when you go to meetings or you go wherever, I just keep, keep coming back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you will keep getting that message. Oh, you might get something there about the next meeting or the next yeah. thing you do. That's why we do our C streams as well. Yeah. I started off with one person going down to that beach. And 10 months ago, we go out on C stream. Mm. And now I do 24, between 24 to 40 people a week. I'm out with now. Do you know what I mean? And the difference it's making. Brilliant. Yeah. It really is. You know, yeah. there are days that they get a sign made of words above it and all. You know, yeah, just, just it. someone texts me earlier on, like, I want to join this and how, how do I go about it? I mean, just, just show up. up. That's all it is. Just show yeah. up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah. I think I would have seen, you know, people saying, oh, I want to get clean and I want to. Yeah. And I kind of be guilty of saying, well, just go to treat like that. And then I hit my own doorstep. Yeah. My own son is in treatment at the moment. Really? He is 14 weeks. So no. proud. Yeah. 14 weeks. And he had to go to an assessment every okay. week for seven weeks with a clean urine. Yeah. But I remember having the argument in Quinn Mirror, if I could get seven clean urines, yeah. sure we wouldn't be having the problems exactly. that we're having, pal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So when it came to my own door, to my own life, I realised how broken the system is. Yeah. And I remember when he went... I'm just going now. It's not what I should say. But when he went with his, his suitcase to the treatment centre, mm. his urine was dirty after mm. having seven clean urines. Yeah. And she, the, the lady looked at me and she kind of shook her head and I was like, you haven't met me, love. And I said, no, no, he's coming in. Yeah. And she said, is your No, no, you didn't hear me. He is coming in here today. Yeah. If I bring him home, I'm going to bury him. Mm. I can't bury my kid. Mm. And he was just standing there, face dropped, because yeah. he tried so hard yeah. to get in, and he worked so so hard, yeah. but he fell at the last hurdle. That's the fear, the fear down there. And I tell you, why. percent. Two or three years ago, I had enough. I thought I had enough. You know what I mean? And I ran camera because it's right, man. I'm gonna do it. I ran camera, and I was going for the three months or whatever it is. And your right. man, your man found me on the phone. It's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having one last bottle. Before I go in there, because I yeah. think I was going in, I was getting to bed very soon. Mm. I was going in like two weeks later, or like two oh, weeks, well. whatever it was. I know they, they never actually explained um, about getting clean urine on. We said, Look, to be a bed in the next event, a couple of weeks. Never said that. Yeah, great, perfect. Well. Back on the drink side away. Two years later, everyone. <laughs> well, he got to the door, and yeah. the door was dirty, and yeah. they were turning him away. Yeah. I was like, No, no, you haven't met me. Like, no, no, he has to come in here. Mm. You don't realise how bad he is. Mm. And I burst into tears. And when I burst into tears, he burst into tears. Yeah. And she was just like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And I just shoved him in the door and yeah. off I went. Yeah. I was like, brilliant now. So absolutely made the, brilliant. He made the right choice for him. You know what he, I mean? All credit to him. Yeah. All credit goes yeah. to him. He fought his little arse off to get yeah. in there. And every week we'd have to go down there on the train. We used to get yeah. trains, planes and automobiles down. And I'd be giving out to him. I'd be like, oh, Dave, I'm fucking sick of this. And I shouldn't have been, but yeah. I was just like... And he, no, he did it. And he kept Brilliant. the job clean until the day he yeah. went in. But he knew it was dirty going down. We don't realise how we affect our families when we're, when we're in addiction. How did it make you feel? How, how, how did you feel on a daily basis knowing that someone's in addiction? 
I didn't realise. Right. I was in denial, I think. Yeah. I don't know what I was in, if that's if that's being completely honest. <coughs> I knew his mental health was on the floor. Yeah. I knew he was very, very unwell. Mm. I knew he was in a very dark place. Mm. He was manky. His bedroom was manky. Mm. You couldn't make him he kill me. You couldn't make no, him wash himself. Me. That was me. I used to say, Why are you so dirty? Mm. His hair used to stick up. And one of his friends is a barber and I say, Would you not ask? Dean to do your hair and he'd say oh, I will he didn't care Yeah. he didn't care about Stop himself caring. so that's where I my worry was and I was saying to to Jimmy Bell and to, to the lads I don't know what's wrong with him mm. and I'd say they were looking at me going what you work with people in addiction yeah. you dickhead yeah. I do not see what's going on but I couldn't and then in denial absolutely in denial yeah. and I helped everyone else yeah. and I solved everyone else's problems you are probably really thinking he's not with them so I don't mean to sound real when I'm saying that, but that's no, all I, that's I think. All I used to think. Like, not my child. Yeah. My, not yeah, my yeah, child. Yeah, exactly. He was very unwell. Yeah. I could see that. And other people were pointing it out to me. Right. And I focused more on that side of things. Okay. So a friend of mine, my best friend, Tina, came in one day. And Dave was sitting and pointing at Joe sitting But he was sitting on the mat in his sitting room. We used yeah. to call him Bobby Sands, right? Because he never got dressed. He went around in my pajamas. <laughs> didn't care. Just didn't care. And he yeah. had a throw wrapped around him. But he was sitting on the floor this day and Tina went in and sat beside him and said to him, what's wrong with you? And he burst into tears and he was rocking and she was rocking with him. Mm. She came in and she said, Glenn, he's not fucking well. Mm. There's something wrong there. And like that, I was like, yeah, no, I, mu- I must, I must fix that. I must have a look at what's going on. Mm. And I half did, mm. but not properly. Yeah. And then he told me, he said, like, one day, you know, I'm flat to the mat in the bag. And I said, what? And fuck off. And mm. he's like, no, I am not. And now I know, now I know the extent of how bad he was. And I suppose I did know. Hard for him to say that to you as well. He knew, he knew it was game over. Yeah. He knew he needed, he knew he needed he help. Surrendered he said that to me, he was like, I'm going to die. Mm. I'm either going to die at the hands of myself or I'm going to overdose. Yeah. It's that simple. And then he was like, you know, I'm dry stiff and this and this. And I was like, of course I know what all this is. Yeah. Of course I do. But yeah. it was, it hit me like a bus. Yeah. Like a train. And people say to me, I was like, Save's my favourite kid. I have three kids and he's my favourite kid. <laughs> Straight up. No, no, they know. Everybody knows. He's cool. Like, he's, he's well aware of the other. Like. They're not okay. No, no, they've got to. He's a baby. Like, and people say, You must miss him terrible in the house. Don't miss him, Tom. Don't mm. miss him even for one single second mm. because I know he's safe. And I look at him, it literally, it's, it's so hard. To, it's, he's like that. And little by little every week he's blooming and really? I only see him once a month. Yeah. So it's it's strict. strict. It gives a recovery though, isn't it? Oh, it is. That little sigh of relief it's as well. It's like what? Yeah. Just touching on Colin, you got the Colin now, don't you? Keeps me. Do you wanna explain that to the people what Colin's are doing? Yeah, yeah. so it's a meeting thank help, it's on a Monday night and you can also do Zoom. Yeah. A friend of mine, Lisa, does the chairs as well sometimes. Really? It's a lifesaver. Mm. It's absolutely a lifesaver. So it just teaches you you're not on your own. There's other mummies out there experiencing what you've experienced. I mean, I've had days in my life where I'd say, I don't like my kid. Mm. I love him. Yeah. I don't fucking like him. Yeah. He hurts me head. He yeah. hurts me eyes. He hurts me feelings. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How how can you borrow 100 euro off your man just not pay it back to her? Yeah. How, you know, and it, it, it kind of helps you work out that in your own head, that madness in your own head. It nearly silences it. Now I'm a little bit traumatised by it because yeah. you do the step work. Yeah. But I do think it, it teaches you. I mean, and I would have been very, very cocky in the sense I thought I knew it all. Yeah. I have a degree. I have a degree. I know everything yeah. till it comes to your door. Exactly. And my God, it's like smack of the loose. Mm. They're like, what now? The what now? Means nothing. Yeah. All your experience, all my experience means nothing till it comes to your door and it's mm. one of your children the, the, that you love the most in the whole world yeah. it's, it's, it's tough yeah. it's tough but I do believe the workforce will start when David gets ill yeah. because he has to come back 100% he has to come back yeah. now I don't want him to come back and he knows that yeah. I just say would you not stay down there for a little bit longer and he's like I have a job to come home to David had a job like yeah. so I have to come home and, and live life on life's terms yeah. and he will yeah. keep linked in link in with us on a Sunday that yeah, he will. He will. He'll enjoy it. Yeah, you know no, I mean? he will. And we're, we're, we're tracking David's room, isn't he? 
24. 24. We've, we've, 20, 20, 20, we've only, yeah, we've 20, 21 year olds down there, you know. Yeah. We brought uh, one of the lads out today, it's his first one, and he's still down there. Is he? He's down there since this morning, yeah. I get it off him. He's loving it down there, you know what I mean? Yes, it's yeah. a different yeah. way of life for him, and it's simple. It's getting up early on a Sunday morning, going down to the beach, a few tunes, good people around you, and a bit of music, you know. It's, yeah. it, it's great. Um, look, I want to thank you for coming in. It was a great story. Yeah. So, well, anyone wants to like donate, that. anyone wants to donate, don't tell the regular. <laughs> don't tell the regular. <laughs> give me a show, I'll give Glenn a show. Thanks for your Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.